Thursday, June 4th. It's overcast at the moment and our weather has been in the 70s and 80s with the last couple of days being in the 90s. And in terms of our garden, the most noticeable amount of growth would be from our patch of glass gem corn over here. We also have a black futsu pumpkin that is also making a good amount of growth and it's getting a little bit bigger now. Hoping to get some nice pumpkins out of it. The other plant that we're excited about is this Kaho watermelon. We're down to the last three seeds and we were able to get this nice plant. It's growing across the path now and I was actually hoping it would grow into the open space but plants know best as to where they want to go so we're not going to redirect this one. If you're just visiting this space, we have a lot of herbs and different types of herbs that we grow up that way and um, some citrus and fruit trees as well. We'll head to the back where we have the majority of our plants in about 150 square foot of space and I call it the 150 square foot garden. It's I think an average garden size so it's a good uh, vignette of what can be grown in that amount of space. Before we head over there, we have uh, a few plants that are growing up in this area that was recently created this year. And these are the hatch peppers. We're actually going after a nice large one and specifically grew this variety, which is the New Mexico 64. The plants don't look like they're tall enough to make a really good sized pepper. So I've been picking off the blossoms um, since this one is here and accessible. And big. I've been picking them off and then the ones that are in the back we're just letting them grow and see what type of uh, peppers they will produce if we don't do anything with them. These are red flame grapes that are getting bigger and then as we come down we have a couple of potato plants so look out for the potato plants that you'll see in this update. We're growing um, them in small batches so they're at different uh, different points of maturity. So this one's a little bit more mature, it's starting to yellow now. And that has to do with this concept that we're trying to perfect, which is succession, succession sowing and growing small harvests rather than large ones that uh, we end up having to store and find ways to use. So rather than get one large one at the end of the season, we're getting small ones throughout the year. Uh, we're also trying out growing a potato plant in a cardboard box. So we're gonna see if we can get potatoes from this cardboard box before it breaks down. Um, with regard to our weather, it's been really good tomato fruit setting weather. So we're getting a lot of fruit sets on our tomato plants. This is the ox heart tomato. Um, over here in our other tomato bed, we have various ones that are set in fruit. This is another ox heart. Uh, celebrity hybrid the Cherokee purple and then on the other side we have this massive mega bloom tomato that we're growing for fun we're letting it grow it's basically uh, a few blossoms that are fused together you get this Frankenstein tomato that ends up being very big and then this is the Prince Borghese tomato that's also setting fruit and then over that way in our 150 square foot garden um, we have zucchinis. This is getting out of control in terms of its growth. It's got a really good spot, so it's happy it's throwing a bunch of leaves and stuff. And we have um, zucchini. Uh, they're good when they're harvested at around six inches. They're tender and very sweet and buttery. If you cook it up with some salt and olive oil, uh, it tastes like you've added butter to it. So here is our Roma bed. Getting a lot of fruit sets on Romas. Hopefully it will translate into nice large ones. Uh, we'll figure it out. Well, I guess we'll find out when they're ready to go. And uh, we started another uh, sowing of corn. This is the Oaxacan green corn. And we sowed it along this uh, row here. And the idea is that uh, when it gets tall and our summers are in the triple digits, it'll provide some shade and cooling to the plants in the back. Uh, this is a really good warm weather season crop and it grows really well when it's hot and we've over sowed this area because uh, birds like to come and thin out our plants so the ones that make it past the birds will thin them out some more um, in terms of corn we have the strawberry popcorn that's over there and then the 
golden bantam corn and we always sow them staggered so that they're not producing pollen at the same time and cross pollinating one another. Have more potatoes over here in grow bags that we're trialing to see how the potatoes do in grow bags and I want to see it for myself. So we have Yukon gold right here and then a uh, russet potato. Back there we have some peaches that are ready to go. They're starting to turn yellow and we have this strawberry clamshell to protect it from birds nibbling at them. This is uh, got some yellow on it so it's ready to go. I like them nice and crunchy so I think we're going to harvest that after the video is done. And the idea with this clamshell is to prevent the birds from pecking at it. Um, I don't think you really need to secure the fruit because birds are not very acrobatic. They'll land on a branch and they'll peck at it so if we uh, we cover it they'll, they'll land here and they won't get to the fruit so that's the idea um, if you caught the tomato episode this is how our grafted tomato is doing getting a little bit taller the ox heart usually grows a little bit slowly over here let's uh, remove this sucker over here we're gonna single stem this plant I was debating whether or not to let it grow multi stem but for the sake of trying to get large Ox heart tomatoes, and let's grow it single stem um, just to play it safe. Other things over here are shishito peppers, we're getting some blossoms on them. We have some volunteer cosmos, and still working on getting edamame or soybean. I think I sowed them too soon, got over anxious, so we're gonna wait until maybe at least after May. This, this was the early sowing. Um, we're gonna let these go into seed save the seeds and sow them next year. Other flowers are this uh, Morzinias. This is a giant purple one. And more shishito peppers. Was tr trying to get some bok choy to grow over here but it was very frustrating because uh, some critter will come out nighttime and dig them out. Just like they did some digging last night over there. Dug out some of our onions. Um, but recently plopped down some more bok choy and this is actually there's actually egg carton down there and we're trialing the use of egg cartons because we've been eating a lot of eggs lately because of the pandemic um, they're very easy to get some source of protein but um, yeah we just threw the grew the seeds in the egg carton and then just planted the whole a cart in here. It's, I think it's pretty cool because then you get your spacing down. You don't have to worry about spacing. You just cut the egg carton in half and then plant the plants. Uh, there's a bok choy here. There's supposed to be some green onions in the second egg carton sh sh uh, cell. So that's what we have over there. And then over here we have some tomatillos. Got a couple of plants and we're still working on our goal of growing enough tomatillos to make our own salsa. So hopefully this is the year for that. Uh, we have a bitter melon that's growing, some volunteer bitter melon. These are actually from uh, from seeds that I had set on the stump and just forgot about. They dropped in the back and they turned into plants. This is our bed of peppers, and they really like peppers. Really like heat, so they're a little bit slow at growing, but with the warmer temps, they're starting to really grow and some of them are making blossoms like this bell pepper I should probably pick it off but, but uh, as far as everything else it's going and growing and we're getting fruit from our peach tree and we've been getting fruit from our Pakistan mulberry tree as well as our our blueberries but I'm very excited about freestone because that, those are one of my favorite fruits and we have a uh, few of them growing throughout, a uh, few varieties that is, including that one that is not making any fruit this year. I think it didn't get cold enough, so maybe next year we'll get some fruit from that tree. So um, that's going to be a wrap on our garden update. Thank, thank you for coming out and visiting. I hope everyone's doing well, and I hope your garden is growing well as well. See you in the next video.